Welcome to Psychic Holistic Spotlight of Rhode Island. I'm Kathy Costa, your host for today. We also have Bill Hannon and Josie Way as our co-host for today. Um, today, so we have an astrologer today. Uh, we haven't had one in a while. Um, so his name is Jay. He's been doing this for a short time. He's a little bit younger than, than some of us, but he's still got their experience. Um, so is it the Western or the Eastern um, astrology that, that's been done here for you? It's Western it's astrology. It's the Western, okay. Yep. Now, how long have you been doing this and what got you interested in the Western astrology? Since I was like 17, I've probably okay. been doing astrology. And what got me interested in Western was that I just, I guess I live in the West. I don't know. <laughs> so it just was what was taught to me. Okay. Yeah, cause I know some people get interested in the Eastern as well, though, too, but, you know, they've been here, so it just depends on what we get um, drawn to. Yeah, both are equally effective, so okay. they're yeah. both complete systems in themselves. Okay. Yeah. All right. One of the great things is now you don't have to draw your charts completely. As a, you get their computer-generated programs that yeah. give you a, a basic template. Yeah, that makes it so easy to look at transits, to look at progression. So basically, how the planets are moving over your own personal birth chart. Yeah. So yeah, the I use I work with computer software a lot, but you know, in the beginning, I wanted to get a mastery of the subject, so mm -hmm. I was just drawing my own, learning mm -hmm. how to do it correctly, all the math, all you know, including the interpretive side. So. Okay. So yeah, astrology is really just like a language in and of itself, and I'm an interpreter of that language. Yeah, I know it takes a while to, to learn everything with it, though. Um, so how does the, the birth chart overlap, though, like the different degrees of the, um, the circle? I know it's a circle. Um, you want me to the hold planet, it up? Yeah, so it might be easy to just kind of explain yeah, it that way. Yeah, so if we could zoom in on that, yeah. So right there, that's what a zodiac chart looks. This happens to be my mother's, so I'm just using it as an example, but basically you can see all these little glyphs inside the chart are the planets, of which there are 10. So astrology is really very simple. Like I said, it's a language. So if you're going to go to a foreign country, you hire an interpreter. If you want to know the language of you know, your spiritual DNA, of you know, your psychology, things like that, you hire me. And then I interpret it for you. So I'm just... You don't have to understand all that's going on in here because I explain it and break it down for you when you sit down with me. So their astrology is really very simple in the fact that it breaks down into four phases. So you have the planets, which are like the characters in the play, and they rule all these 12 signs and these 12 houses, which are like the kingdoms and like the nature of those kingdoms. So you have like, you know, Cancerian as a watery sort of kingdom, nurturing, you know, things like that. But then you go to Aries and it's like athletic and warrior energy and they're a warrior nation. And so they're ruled by Mars. And so you can really see how like the signs just tell us how a planet is expressing itself. And based on the time of your birth, these planets are placed in all different places. And a chart won't repeat for over 2000 years. Mm. So everybody is so highly individualized and unique. So basically, I'm more like an astrological coach than anything, and I interpret this, and then I put it within the context of your life. So, so why is it so specific that they want to know the exact time that you're born, or the location? Okay, that's born? a good question. So every four minutes, the degree on the eastern horizon will change, and, and the rest of the zodiac for that matter. So the, before I showed it up, and sorry to make you zoom in again, but basically we break the, the heavens up into like a 12 slice pizza pie. Mm -hmm. Based, and this can only be done with the exact time of your birth because we have to know what sign was on the eastern horizon. And from there, we use what's called a house system. There are a few different kinds. People use the ones they're comfortable with. But this divides the heavens up equally into the different areas of your life. And every four minutes, the degree on the cusp is going to change. So you got to think, like, it's very, very specific, the nature of your brain and your body that's imprinted there and the rest of the placement of your chart that will follow. So yeah, they, that's why you want to know the exact specific time of your birth, because these areas of your life are going to tell me what's happening in the second house of your finances, 
or the mm -hmm. eighth house of other people's money. Mm -hmm. is this, you know, this would, is what gives astrologers a unique skill set to say, at this time in your life, you should be focused on this, relationships. At this time in your life, you should be focused on that. And you know, that's, that's how we can see it. Okay, and uh, the second part of the question, why is it so imperative that you have, you know where the geographic location is? Uh, because that's the other thing. So based on your exact location, right, um, the sun's not <clears throat> rising at the same time in London as it is Understood. in Rhode yeah. Island. So right. the sign on the eastern horizon, the heavens are always rotating around us, right? right? So the sign on the eastern horizon, which we call your ascendant, is going to be different based on where you are. Right. So, gotcha. Right. So I thought it also had something to do with the other planets, too, as to how they're interfacing with your energy system. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it does, but at the same time, like, the only planet that moves very significantly throughout in the, the, the course of a day is the moon. Moon, right. Which moves a half a sign a day. Right. So 12 to 14 degrees mm -hmm. of one zodiac sign, so about two, two and a half days, it's out and into the next sign, mm -hmm. making a lap of the entire heavens every single month. Everything else is probably going to be in about the same place. So gotcha. If I just look, no matter when you were born, if I just look at the day you were born, I could probably tell you quite a bit about yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the time of the day, though, just find, kind of fine-tunes it? Yeah, it makes it, it's, it's what brings the personal touch and shows me exactly what makes you different from the person who was born 10 minutes after you in a different part of the hospital. Okay. You know, or who, who was born three states over and at the exact same time. You're going to be highly individualized because of the exact time of your birth. Okay, so... You know, say like the, I know you mentioned the finances being a different house, though, if it's a different, like, time of day. How much of a difference would that be, though? Like, like, like um, say, 4.40 in the afternoon, um, in the finances, you're in the financial house, though, where, like, you're really good with money. Yeah. But if you're born, like, 12 hours later, though, does that mean, though, like, you won't be so good with money? Um, not necessarily. It just means your relationship with money will be different. Okay. So, like... If you're a Taurus rising, then you're going to need a certain level of material comfort and grounding in the material sphere. You're, you're going to have to actualize materially and physically your value system. Okay. If I'm a Scorpio rising, the opposite sign, then I'm going to need to empower others and keep money in circulation. It's okay. less about the physical material comfort and security okay. and much more about the spiritual connection that I'm making that brings money to me. So okay. once I understand that, then I can coach my client and say, well, what brings money to you as a Scorpio rising is to keep money in circulation. Okay. To keep investing, to empower other people. And then those people appreciate you so much that they give you money. If you're a Taurus, then it's opposite. You have to let people support your values and then you have to build it. So, you know, that's how we can see differently how you should approach the same subject. Okay. how it might flow to you. And then you have to think there's all the infinite different variations of this. So what makes my skill set unique, like if you go on Cafe Astrology today and you type in your birth time and you get everything, they'll say, well, your Mercury's in Gemini. So, you know, you're a problem solver and you use deductive reasoning and you do this, that, and the other thing, right? Well, but then what if your 12th house is Aries and that's on the cusp of your 12th house? It doesn't overlay artistically like I will, or paint the picture like I won't say, with your Mercury and Gemini and your Sun and Scorpio and your Aries on the 12th house, you need to work on being impulsive here and using your impulses, and then, but you also need to work on tuning in and using your skill set to solve other people's problems, but you're sensitive to the atmosphere. So like, once we go layers deep, it becomes an art and less of a science. Okay, all right, so like the different Zodiacs, though, can be intertwined, though, to just kind of bring out the, what your personality is for this lifetime. Yeah, so they do, they do less of the defining of your personality. Like, you define it. You bring the spiritual mm -hmm. substance. Okay. And then the planets that are there is you're using that raw material to build your physical vessel and your spiritual experience in reality. Okay. So, yeah. Now, I have a question of course. Of practical. Um, do you do this at shows or 
do, do you have a location? Uh, everything right now is on Zoom since the pandemic and mm -hmm. everything, everything's been on Zoom. So my clients just from all over the country or all over the, you know, some people I've had in different countries. So we just get on a Zoom appointment and that's how, how they, I'm working. How have they discovered you? Uh, through, mostly I get a lot of through word of mouth. I'm not a very good salesperson, so <laughs> people work with me and then they tell their friends and then they tell their friends. So I'm, like I said, I'm much more of an astrological coach. You come to me and say, Jay, here's what I'm trying to accomplish. Yeah, now, and then I go, here's how you should go about it. Do you do forecasting? Um, like people want to get married and they want, they want to pick the right dates and yep. you know, things like that, even to they want to have that. a child and stuff like that. Yes, I do do that. Yeah. So like we, you'll get into like astrological timing, like I said. So if you're in a Jupiter five cycle, so like what that means is from the, the horizon, the rising sign, you're gonna count five down. So one, two, three, four, five. If the planet Jupiter, which is growth and expansion, is in that fifth house, that's when a lot of people get pregnant. That's mm -hmm. when a lot of people have children. Sometimes for better, sometimes for worse, because they have them when they're in the fifth cycle, and then they're, they want to go back to work and do other things because the energy of Jupiter leaves the, the right. cycle of kids. And now they have a kid they got to support for 18 years. So like for, for some people, it's the right move. Some people, it's not. I have to define your goals and we have to well, say Well, it's all at. about balance. Of course, exactly. So, you know. You know and uh, we all have our own needs. Yes. And, and Highly a, a reading, a thorough reading like that, could actually help you. Yeah, it's it it will help you unblock a lot of the things, old patterns, habits, things that get in your way, is a lot of what I specialize in. So you sit down with me, and I go. In a prior life, you were a warrior, but now in this lifetime, you have to tune into other people. But to you, that's like the hardest thing in the world because you're learning this skill. But it's the only thing that actually opens the universe up for you, makes things easy. But your natural inclination is, let's say, to be independent, like an Aries. But you need to learn to tune in like a Libra, because your north node's in Libra. And so by, by tuning in to other people, they give you the love, the attention, the energy that you're seeking. When your natural inclination is, I want to keep the focus on myself, by, by listening just to respond, by bringing the conversation back to me, because that's what I knew in a prior life. So really, like, once we get these different little things, like, and there's a whole bunch of them based on your unique, your unique makeup, then it allows you to open up to the universe in ways you couldn't before. Mm -hmm. Things start to unblock. Because until you learn these things, the universe says, well, you're learning this skill set. You haven't learned it yet. We can't move on. And mm -hmm. so things don't open up. Right, right. I'm like a cheat code. <laughs> right, right, right. Now, you mentioned earlier the two varieties, the uh, Eastern and the Western. Is the Eastern the type of thing that you would find on a Chinese placement in a restaurant where you're a rabbit or a dog or? Yeah, so I, as far as I understand about the Eastern, like those are the symbols, those are the different signs. Gotcha, right, like but, the lion or But the... it can get highly individualized. Like if I was born at three in the afternoon, so I know like that's like the time of the monkey. Mm -hmm. So like it, you can even get a different character yeah, that's the for Chinese the zodiac is what you're talking about. Yeah, the Eastern yeah. zodiac for the different time. Mm -hmm. Like even the time you were born has like an inner zodiac. So right. it gets very complex on that end. Right, well, that's why yeah, I was asking. Because yeah, simply saying everybody born in one year is a oh, big. Yeah. That's yeah. the Chinese zodiac. The Eastern zodiac, uh, Eastern um, astrology, they, um, the Western, though, they do more of the... Um, the sun sign yes. as the main focus. Right. The eastern the focus is on the moon sign the moon as the sign. main focus. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, like for me though, my sun sign is a, is a Leo, Same but the, my moon uh, sign is a uh, Virgo. So the eastern will focus more on the Virgo as the main and, focus. And see, I wouldn't focus more on any one thing. I would focus equally on the moon as I do the sun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And equally, but like I, you have to put everything into its proper place. Mm -hmm. So like the moon is her foundational needs. Mm -hmm. So her moon's in Virgo, so she needs to have a daily routine and ritual that's mm -hmm. about the same, mm -hmm. it's in an earth sign. <laughs> if somebody else messes that up, it could throw her off for a week, a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she can change it if she wants, but other people coming in and messing it up, not so good. Also, you have the moon in Virgo. Virgo's overly analytical, which tends to be self-critical. Mm -hmm. So then once the criticism comes in, it may stop her from doing things. So we have to override 
all the criticism or analysis that keeps her from sharing her emotions, the moon. So what we want to do is unblock that. Once we have the foundational needs of the moon met, you can feel comfortable enough to go out into the world and, and start to provide the Virgo and service that she wants to provide and, and use those, those natural lunar instincts to take care of other people in a way that works for her, mm -hmm. which is pouring other people that cup of coffee that makes their day, you know, uh, washing her significant other's you know, sweatshirt and that detergent he likes. Like, there's all these little things that she can do instinctually, the moon, that makes other people's lives better. Yeah. And so as you can see, like then we go into your sun sign and another thing, like I would never discount any one thing. So. Well, yeah, it's just, it's just the focus is just um, different, you know, from what I've seen, but I don't know that much about astrology. <laughs> yeah, no, that, it's, you know, it's I like, think it's but, very hard because when I first sat down um, with the lady who got me into this, she offered to do my thing for free. And that's what kind of <laughs> got me into it. She was so nice, I was struggling. I was at a tough point when I was like 17. I didn't want to go to college. I graduated early. And then, you know, she was like, I'll just do your chart for you. But then she sat down with me and showed me my chart. And I'm like, I don't even know what this means. I don't even, I, you wouldn't even know what to ask, right? Because right. you're just looking at a bunch of symbols. Yeah. So I, like you, I didn't really know what to ask. Like, what do I say? And so now that I've developed an understanding, like I'm able to explain it to people very simply. It, like it's, I feel like it's very hard for somebody who doesn't know a lot about it to ask a question about it. Yeah. yeah. But what I would say, and what your audience should know, is that like astrology just gives us a vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So it just allows, it gives us a vocabulary that allows us to describe and control what was once indescribable and uncontrollable. So you can take control of these forces in your life rather than falling victim to them, rather than being taken over by them. Like by having the conscious awareness that you tend to overanalyze your emotions and then they don't get expressed, now you can say, oh, my astrologist said that. Okay, here's where it's coming from. We've identified it. Now I have the vocabulary. What am I doing? I'm analyzing. Oh, wait, that analysis turned to criticism. Mm -hmm. And now I'm not expressing. We switch that up and now your moon energy can start to flow. Yeah. Because I'm adjusting to, to what works for me. Exactly. Yeah. As an individual. Yeah. And then I'm giving you the tools in a simplistic version. Mm -hmm. So lastly, my, my ascendant is in Sagittarius. So how does that throw everything else into the mix? How does it throw everything yeah. else into the mix? So like if your ascendant's in Sag, then you know, you're going to have to rely. So the ascendant's really your brain and your body mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. But it's also the path that you walk in life. Mm -hmm. So for you, it's got to be an intuitive one. You have to mm -hmm. rely much more on intuition, meaning logic, I mean... Uh, knowledge beyond logical reasoning. So for you, it's like not a lifetime where you can think about everybody else before you act. The universe is telling you what to do. Mm -hmm. You already intuitively know. And now it's your job to make that decision and go ahead with that action without trying to explain to me or her or them why you're doing it. Yeah. That just backs up your intuition. It's mm -hmm. not, you, you shouldn't be debating in this lifetime. That's always bad. Yeah. You know, trying to convince other people you're right. So because you've been given that gift of intuition through Sagittarius, and that's the path that you have to walk to your destiny, which is your sun sign, what you're going to want to do is continue to um, stop trying to, like I said, have that debate with your mom in your head about that next decision that you're making. Mm -hmm. You're just going to want to go ahead and do it because the universe already gave you the answer. The other thing is if you keep all these options open in your life, so like you don't like to limit your options as a Sag. You, you like to keep all of them on the table because if you choose the one you know is intuitively correct, the other one could be the best one mm -hmm. down the road. Yeah. But because you already know 100% that your intuition is correct, you have to cut out all the other options for the universe to organize itself. Yeah. So a lot of times when your life feels stagnant, it feels stagnant because you're keeping too many options open or you haven't synthesized the options that you have. Okay. Yeah, that works. <laughs> so. All right, so we only have a little bit more time to left the, uh, of the show. How can people get hold of you, of you if they want to get a reading? So Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, at JSUN Astrology. That's J, just the letter, J, S-U-N, Astrology, all one word. So JSUN Astrology. Mm. And you can message me on Facebook. You can message me on YouTube or jsunastrology at gmail.com. You can find me there. Okay. Well, that's a lot of options of people to get a hold of you. Yeah. So, 
and you do career readings, relationship readings, mm -hmm. I coach all sorts of oh, stuff. Oh, so you so. do couples readings though too though? Is I do a the, lot of okay. couples work. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you, your, couple, your significant other wants to know why you're not telling them about your emotions and now they just found out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and so then you also want to know what you need to do to help support them. And so it really just opens up the relationship in ways you can't when everything's buried. Yeah. When you don't understand what's happening. Exactly. Life, yeah. And again, everybody already knows this. Like you're saying, I already know I'm intuitive. Like that, I already knew that. But now that you said it, you're right. I keep these options on the table mm -hmm. and then I don't cut anything out. And then my life's not organizing around what I really want. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I'm hearing some things from my own wisdom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Like you already intuitively know these things. And I'm just giving you the vocabulary yeah. to put it into use, to yeah, take advantage yeah. of it practically. Yeah. yeah. So for everyday life, though, that helps you for the best that works for you. And we have so many choices we're faced with. Yeah. That being able to narrow down according to what suits us is a great thing to be able to do. Yeah. That's, and that's what I try, that's what I do with my clients. Yeah. You know, what works best for you? And a lot of people aren't acting out of what works best for them. A lot of people are acting compulsively. Yeah, or um, yeah, the, particularly about jobs. People are uh, you know, staying in jobs that they're not happy with. Exactly. Because, they're... you know, they want, you know, bread on the table. Exactly. And then a lot of times people think they either just need to hurry up and quit that job, which isn't smart because then they don't have the, the other. income. Or they need to, or they don't, they just stick with one job because, and they don't work on the other thing. I can help yeah. them marry those two things. You can help f them find what they love doing. Yes, and help them actually create a practical framework that works for them to get to it. Like you're not going to have a moon, uh, an earth moon, and be able to give up monetary value very easily without feeling stressed out about it. But my moon's in Sagittarius and I could just quit any job and live poor and be fine because I'm like, that's such a restraint on my soul. So like I could just walk out of anything and be like, I'm not even gonna care about what's gonna happen tomorrow. I'm not doing this anymore. That's why I like the stability. <laughs> right, where, do, right. Yeah. but if you have your moon in Taurus, you're not walking out of your job tomorrow. Like that's just <laughs> not gonna happen. It would be unwise for you to do it. And you're not greedy, you just need the material thing more than I need it. So you, it's a fundamental need. So I can help you realize it's not wrong that. It's just a different way to live your life. Yeah, and yeah. Some, a lot of people have a partner or a mother or a parent or somebody who is pressuring them into living their life a certain way. And they don't know how to overcome that because they intuitively know what's right for them, but they don't have this vocabulary. They don't understand how to put it into the terms I can. They don't go, oh, this is why I do this. And mm -hmm. this is why I, I feel so responsible for my mom and my dad because I'm a Capricorn or I'm a Cancer. And I put the weight of the world on my shoulders. And so I feel like for the third, you know, for Capricorns, their lives don't even begin until they're 30. They're just weighted with responsibility to the family and the things they should do. Because mm -hmm. their ruling planet Saturn works in 30 year cycles. So it's, they don't realize they have to have that first Saturn return. They have to get there first. And then life opens up. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so when you have an understanding of the timing, you don't stress out. You're like, okay, I can put a lot of work into what I really want to do, and then at 29 and a half, I can really go attack it. Mm -hmm. You have to get yourself ready so for that. So that's though, the yeah. progression of Saturn is 29 and a half 29, years? Just about 29 and a half years on average, yeah. That's an interesting concept. Yeah. And the way you just explained how things fall into place, you know, it's... Yeah. Exactly. So, so like, it's like your circulatory system, you know, your, your, your heart pumps the blood through your liver yeah. and it does some of the work now, but it doesn't complete the work until the blood goes through the liver again and then the change happens. Exactly. Yeah. And I think the liver is supposed to um, regulate the nutrients in the blood. So yeah, right. You got the and arteries filtering. pumping it out to the capillaries, then the yeah. veins carrying it back up to the heart. So yeah, you're right. It's just like that. Right. Understanding which part of the cycle you're in. Well, sometimes, with that sometimes part of the, cycle. the the the, uh, the liver actually will change a component in the bloodstream 
into a substance that when it comes through the liver again, it can recognize it and complete the change, such as some medicines, when it goes through the liver the first time, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It changes it somehow. Right. But when it comes through the second time, now the liver can do what it's supposed to do and you feel better. Mm -hmm. and, and with transits, which are, you have your natal planets where they are at the time of your birth. Mm -hmm. And then you have the planets that are, the planets keep going around in the circle, but your natal planets never move. Mm -hmm. And then the transit is one of those planets, let's say Saturn, coming back over your natal moon, which will bring fear, anxiety, all this stuff. But it's changing the structure of your emotional expression. Mm -hmm. Saturn rules structures. So during that transit, when it first comes over, you're just observing these changes. You're like, oh, I feel all this. I feel like my life's falling apart. I, I, I can't express myself emotionally. And then it goes retrograde. So basically, like you said, it's going through a second time. Mm -hmm. It hits the planet again, going almost like it's moving backwards. And during that part of the phase, it becomes a very active part of the transit cycle. So all of a sudden, once your transit's retrograde, you're doing stuff to express your emotions. You're actually finding that job that allows you to express what you need and to get what you need on a daily. She's changing her routines that better fit her and she can express herself better through them. So yeah, it's exactly mm. like that. Mm. Like a planetary transit is almost what you described mm. with the liver, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and astrology rules all these different parts of the body, like Aries rules the brain and the head and Taurus rules the throat. And you know, all these planets rule these different things so we get really into the body. What's best for you on a biorhythm type mm -hmm. phase? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I find that very interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny how every, like well, it's a good kind of like interesting where everything just connected. Yeah, you know, I have to study think? absolutely everything. So yeah, <laughs> I have to yeah. study biochemistry. I have to study finance. I have to study. Yeah, uh, well, just enough so you can explain it to to your uh, psychology. To your clients. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, so can you tell us again how people can get a hold of you if they want a reading? So yeah, at Jason Astrology, Jason Astrology at Gmail, that's J, the letter, and then S-U-N Astrology. So. Okay, and you're on you're all social medias like Facebook, um, I'm Twitter. on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can message me on any of those or email me. Okay, hmm. all right. And sessions are on Zoom. Sessions are on Zoom, yep, it's easy, right from your house. Yeah. Um, okay, so so are you still like learning this stuff though, as you, as you're doing the readings? It's though, lifelong or? learning. Is it lifelong? Okay, there's always something else to, to learn. Every about day. It. Yeah. I, I, you have to dedicate your life to it. So. Okay. Because every <clears throat> every person is individual. You learn things for every client. Yes. Because so. things are in juxtaposition with each other differently. Yeah, so you see a and lot of the... And you'll see, you'll, you'll see things that reinforce what you've learned, and you'll see some anomalies that are, you know, something to study more. Exactly. So, like, I'll see the same patterns playing out in different ways because we all have free will. We can express ourselves however we want. Mm -hmm. So we are creating with the potential given to us at the time. And then, yeah, then I'll see somebody come in with a very unique set of planetary combinations, and I'll see them expressing in a way that'll illuminate stuff I overlooked, truths that I missed, and then I'll be able to identify it and it'll bring me down new avenues of study, you know, new, new self-education. Mm -hmm. Sure, so, sure. Yeah, I mean, every, every single thing is highly individual. Or a lot of times I'll study something and then somebody will sit down with me who's in need of what I just learned. Yeah, which typically I love happens. that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. usually how it happens. That's happened. how spirit works with us. Yeah, I the ask, divine timing of everything, yeah. I <laughs> ask spirit to put it in front of me, and, and a lot of times I'm just doing surfing, and boom, there's the answer right there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you must have a ton of books about astrology and different aspects of astrology. You should though. see my library. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I try to read every author, all that they've come out with. So. Oh, so you must have like a never ending list. <laughs> yeah, because you got like Joseph Campbell says, if you've only read one book by the author, you've really heard nothing from them. So you really want to study everything somebody said so yeah. you have a complete picture. Because they write over a period of time and they evolve over a period of time.